welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study. Jim Lilly with you once again. And uh, if you recall, we've been studying Philippians chapter 2. And so if you would find Philippians chapter 2, and uh, we had completed this study last Wednesday. Uh, we had determined that Jesus was very much alive. He came out of the grave alive. And uh, that triggers many things. The fact that Jesus overcame death uh, gives him privilege and right that uh, uh, we're going to look at here today. And so, look with me now. Uh, we see that uh, uh, Jesus Christ will be glorified. He will uh, be honored. Uh, matter of fact... I think that's the word we'll go with. Sorry for stepping out of the camera a moment. Uh, I think I gave you the wrong word, what I'm looking for. Uh, let's go with honored. He will be honored. And uh, read with me verse 10 through verse 11. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, 10 through 11. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things of earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. If you remember, John 3, 16 said, God so loved the world, he gave us his only begotten son. That gift to us uh, was, was the most uh, uh, precious gift you will ever receive. But yet there are some who reject that gift and some who don't, do not acknowledge that gift. And... Uh, but uh, they'll never escape the fact God has determined that every created being will give honor to his son. Now, uh, for those of us in Christ, uh, we will give, uh, we try to give honor now and we'll look forward to the day we'll give honor in heaven. Uh, but those without Christ think that they can get by. There's actually people say, well, Jesus is just another man. He's not important to me. People buy billboards, spend uh, uh, money, their life trying to disprove the fact that Jesus Christ is God. And even those individuals, even though they never did on this earth, and it will not uh, be the proper uh, time to, to acknowledge him because it'll be too late, but every knee shall bow. Every false god will bow. Every person who has rejected Jesus Christ will bow and acknowledge him as Lord. And that, that's what it said. It's not speaking of some universal form of salvation. Some people look at it and say, oh, everybody's going to be saved. Well, no, there's going to be many people that are going to bow and acknowledge him as the Lord, but yet they, they, they haven't uh, received him as Lord. Uh, and I hope I'm not being confusing. Uh, no one is exempt. There's not a person exempt. Uh, but I would encourage you, to confess him as Lord is now, uh, will he not only be your Savior and your Lord, uh, but th there'll be no force of it. Uh, I think that uh, all those in Christ will willfully bow and acknowledge him as Lord, but there's been many who have, are not in Christ, and, and they will be forced, if you would, to bow and acknowledge him as Lord. Uh, uh, you know, Jesus deserves our worship, doesn't he? Uh, you know, uh, the Bible says anyone who does not honor Christ, uh, God will not honor him when he stands before him. Uh, our acceptance into heaven and our eternal existence with uh, God the Father for all eternity has zero to do with anything that we do or, or what we have done. It has everything to do with whether or not we have received Jesus Christ, God's Son, as Lord of our lives. And so, uh, you know, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ has been given all authority uh, uh, by his Father. Uh, you know, it says there, that, look at verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, we spoke last week about the power of that name. No name more powerful. I've seen people in their final days uh, of find encouragement when you uh, give them the name of Jesus. I've seen people... Uh, watch their life uh, uh, turn around at the name of Jesus. It's the most important name, and that name will be honored through all eternity. 
And so uh, uh, Psalms 95, 6, uh, you do not have to turn here, uh, but it, why don't you write down uh, Psalms 95, 6 and turn there when you get a chance. And it says, All come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Isn't that interesting? Uh, and, and this psalmist, uh, much, much, uh, literally thousands of years before Philippians was written, uh, was seen bowing down and worship connected. Now, I'm not saying you have to be on your knees to worship God. You can worship God while you're driving your car uh, from town to town. Uh, you can worship God while you're at work, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in your work cubicle or, or maybe in a piece of equipment you're running or whatever the story may be. Uh, you can worship God. But uh, this connection of bowing, honoring, uh, prostrate, if you would, before God uh, and worship. And so, uh, uh, I, you know, I hope, I hope I've, I've made sense of that. Uh, and, you know, uh, probably most people that, that come here to Faith Baptist uh, here in Ligoti, uh, they, they, they have by this point uh, caught my philosophy on worship. And I am not saying that you have to be on your knee to worship. But uh, what is going to be, there's going to be a final moment, a great moment at some period in eternity where all individuals will bow on their knee and acknowledge Christ as Lord. I look forward to it. I hope you do also. Uh, if you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord, you do not want to wait to that time to acknowledge him as Lord. Acknowledge him right now. I know uh, maybe you're sitting in your office or sitting, uh, you know, in your living room or kitchen, wherever you may be uh, watching this, probably watching on your phone, uh, might be in your office cubicle. Uh, just take a moment and say, Father, I do believe you're the Lord of the universe and I want you to be my Lord. Would you do that? Uh, and and that, that's what it's encouraging us to do. Uh, so uh, then we see that uh, we need to carry out the goal of our salvation. Now, this isn't carry out to receive our salvation. This is carry out because we have salvation. We carry out the goal uh, of our salvation, the Bible says. And so read verse 12 and 13. It's kind of a, a, a confusing uh, couple of verses if we don't take it in its context. Uh, it says, Wherefore, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in the absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which works in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Now I want you to look at some careful wording here. If you would say, it doesn't say work for your salvation. It says work out your salvation, something you already have. Uh, so you complete it. You know, the Bible plainly teaches uh, that our salvation is apart from human works. Uh, we just live a life in contrast to our old lifestyle. That's the work. Uh, you know, what you were before Christ came into your heart and what you are now should be different. Matter of fact, we're going to look in a moment. It should be radically different. There should be a noticeable difference. Now, I get it. There's many things in our, your life that you're still battling. There's many things in my life that I'm still battling. I have not achieved uh, sinless perfection. As a matter of fact, I think in reality, I do realize the reality, I never will. But that doesn't mean uh, that I don't uh, seek uh, to produce a radically different lifestyle than I did before Jesus came into my heart. Hold your marker in Philippians chapter 2 and turn back to one book, Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and we'll, uh, we'll see uh, why I had stated, and I believe the Bible states, that we do not work out our salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Now look at verse 9. Not of works lest any man should boast. Did you get that? Uh, it actually pointed out, it wasn't like we had to figure it out. What is it saying here? You know, there's some passages, 
that I sit back with commentaries and, and some passages that they I'll sit with a, a cup of coffee and, and read through and through and get into all my reference material and still, uh, still be struggling with this meaning. But it plainly says that our salvation is by the grace of God and we believe that grace we, we, by faith. Uh, God's God's role is grace. Our role is faith. And one thing that it isn't is works. Uh, lest any man should boast. It's the, isn't it the human? Uh, if, you know, if I could do something that would gain God's favor and, and he would let me uh, walk into his heaven, uh, I know how I'm wired. There's no way I'm going to let that go. I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, look what I've done. But you know, I can't say that. And if you're saved, you can't say that. Uh, God uh, extend his grace to you. You were a sinner. I was a sinner. Uh, trust me, I was a great sinner. Uh, I was a sinner. You were a sinner. God lovingly and kindly uh, extended that gift of salvation to us, and we believe that. Uh, you see, when that extension was made, our role was to believe. you got to believe it's, it's, it's God can do it all, Right? Uh, that's what we got to believe. We got to believe that God can save us. We got to believe that God can work through us and God can keep us saved. And God, we got to believe that. That's our faith. Now, I'm not saying that my faith is perfect. Don't get me wrong. There's moments of, of, of questioning and doubt, just like any human being. Uh, but, but that's what we believe. You see, uh, this verse does not say work for your salvation. Only demonstrate your salvation for others. You see, we're justified, sanctified, and glorified by Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ does the work, the heavy lifting, if you will. Uh, he only asks that we remain a faithful vessel for him to work through. He just says, uh, give me a vessel that I can work through. Uh, and now there, there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of debate what that vessel should look like. What a debate, what that vessel uh, would contain. Uh, but in actuality, it's a surrendered life, uh, uh, a radically surrendered life, a life that says, God, you are Lord, and I'm not, and so I will do what, uh, what you ask of me. Now that, God can work through it. And boy, can he work through it. Uh, but you know, there's nothing about Jesus I don't like. Uh, he saves you, he justifies you, he sanctifies you, then he glorifies you, and then there's one day he will give you rewards for it. He says he will give us rewards for remaining faithful, and yet he provides all the, uh, he does all the work. He does it all. You know, it, uh, what Christian uh, fruit I have, and uh, there, there is some Christian fruit, uh, not as much as I wish. I need to keep, uh, keep uh, that goal in sight. I should be more surrendered. I should more desire to do more for the, uh, let him do more through me. That's a proper term. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, uh, he does it all, then he rewards us for it. Who can not see Jesus Christ as special. There's nothing about Christ uh, that, that I don't uh, love and enjoy. I don't know about you. Uh, so uh, let, let's look at uh, verse 14 and, and 15. The Christian life is radical. Now I'm not talking fanatical. There are some people that claim they're radical and actually all they are fanatical. They're a little kooky sometimes. <laughs> That's a uh, that, that I shouldn't have said that. I, that kind of got me over in, in, in the weeds. I apologize for that term. But, but they're less than scriptural in, in how they present themselves. And so the Bible plainly says, uh, the Bible plainly says that the Christian life is radically different. Look in verse 14 and 15. Do all things without murmurings and disputings that you may be blameless and harmless, the children of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world, 
Now think about that. Uh, the Bible says that uh, now Paul wrote Philippians in 62 AD. Okay, almost 2,000 years ago. Uh, we're we're 20, uh, 22 years, uh, excuse me, 42 years away from this being 2,000 years ago. So if if the the Lord tarries 42 years, this writing will be 2,000 years old. And look what Paul called the generation that he was coexisting with. He said uh, that you may be blameless uh, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation uh, among whom you shine a light in the world. Now, if you recall, uh, Paul was a prisoner at Rome, the Roman Empire. Uh, it contributed to many things that we have today. Do you know our democracy? Uh, uh, finds its roots in the Roman government and and road system and and they contributed many positive things to to society that's going on even today. But in actuality, uh, the Roman government uh, they, they they were crooked and and and, and they were perverse and uh, and that's the government Paul was living with. Now I think you would agree with me. And I'm, this isn't speaking about government. But our nation, uh, we have to be careful. There's a lot of perversion. There's a, there's a lot of crookedness. And so uh, one thing that hasn't changed in almost 2,000 years is the crooked perverseness of humanity. But one thing also that hasn't changed in 2,000 years is the responsibility of Christians to shine brightly in dark world. Uh, and so, uh, look what it says. Uh, it says, uh, among whom you shine as light in the world. Oh my goodness. Uh, there's nothing more welcoming in, in darkness than light. Uh, back last summer, uh, we, my wife and I, we live in, live in town. So, uh, we, we have some interruptions in power, but they usually last an hour or two hours. But we had one that lasted three days. And, and it was very interesting how during that three days, how much you, we missed, we didn't miss light during the day. We just opened the blinds. Matter of fact, uh, since the air wasn't running, because we, our air conditioner ran off electric, we had the blinds closed during the day. Keep as much the sun out as we could, for we didn't heat the house. But during the night, during the night, we would bring all these artificial lights. We would light them all over the house. And how welcoming that light was during darkness. Now I know that maybe you don't accept this role, and sometimes I don't either. But but it, it's an actually a welcoming thing to those that work. See, we assume that people love darkness, but but the Bible tells us it's quite the contrary. Can you remember when the light of Jesus shined in your heart and you ran out of darkness? Can you remember that? I can remember that. I really can. It was a long time ago, decades ago. But I can remember the feeling of finally finding light. My life had a whole different outlook because now I was walking in light. You walk in light, you don't trip, do you? You walk in light, you don't, you don't uh, miss things. Now, uh, and that's why we're saying, so when you have a relationship with Jesus, he changes you. He changes you. You, you know, maybe you didn't even desire uh, you know, some changes we don't even desire. Well, matter of fact, we actually fight it. There's some changes in my life that, that I wasn't crazy about. I didn't want to change. But Jesus changed me. It wasn't like I was like, okay, now I'm a Christian. I'm ready to change. I have to admit, that wasn't my, my journey. Might have been yours, and, and I tip my hat to you if it was. Mine was kind of the opposite. I wanted to hold on to some things. But, but he changed me. He, it, he did it. I didn't do it. It wasn't my desire. He did. And so, uh, you know, we're told not to murmur. And a murmur is actually to express discontent. Uh, I'm guilty, and, and probably many of you watching are guilty. Uh, you know, God has blessed my life and blessed this nation so greatly. Uh, complaining and discontent should not be it. You know, I, I know that there may be pockets in America, and I don't want to be, 
I, I don't know for a fact, but for the most part, have you thought about it? Most people have running water. Most people have electricity. You know, in many places in the world, they do not have that. My parents live out in the country uh, in rural West Virginia, have city wall, have, have, have electric, you know, have all the conveniences. They get to enjoy the country, but they have all the conveniences. And I would assume that, that that story is repeated all over America. You go down in Tennessee, Alabama, out west, most of all those areas have running water, electricity, and many of the conveniences. But has it made America thankful? No, I, I don't, I can't hardly even watch the news. Matter of fact, I kind of have taken the news fast, if you would, because of all the complaining just brought me down, brought me down. Uh, now I'm not saying that I'm ignorant of the events. I, I've kind of scanned the headlines, but I'm not interested in all the, the talking points. They just bring me down. Uh, I, I think our nation needs to repent of its murmuring and, and discontent. Uh, uh, God has blessed this nation, but this isn't a lecture on the nations. And, and, the, and, uh, and, and to even bring that in, I'm adding to this verse, God said just as a Christian that, that I, I don't need to be murmuring. I guess if a lost person wants to murmur, I guess that's between them and God. But, but he says, I'm the one that needs to clean my heart. We're always interested. Everybody wants America to change and, and America to be better and America this, America that, but nobody herself wants to change. They want you to change, you know. Uh, uh, they, everybody wants harmony, but uh, they want harmony to think like that. If you think differently, then they want you to change. Or, and to be honest with you, I'm in the same boat. If somebody thinks different, I want them to change. And But that's not what it says here. And, and so... Uh, when you study, we are luminaries for Christ. Uh, Jesus is light, and we reflect the light for others to see. You ever been uh, outside on, on during a full moon? Now, we're getting ready to have that harvest moon, the brightest of moons. I love the harvest moon. I feel like you can reach out and touch it. Uh, but but uh, the, the moon doesn't have light. The moon reflects light. It doesn't create any light. The moon has nothing uh, structurally about it to create light. You see, the rays of the sun hit the moon, and they reflect. They're actually the the, the moon is actually reflect, reflecting rays of the sun. And so uh, that's the way your my life is. Uh, I don't have any Christian light, but I can reflect the light of Jesus. You see, uh, Jesus shines on to me, and then I reflect that to others. I'm a luminary. So we're the moon. He's the sun, right? And we're, 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 we take the role of the moon. Uh, now, uh, Matthew 5, 14 through 16, I don't have time tonight to read there, but read on your own, maybe, maybe before you go to bed tonight. Or read Matthew 5, 14, 16. Uh, Jesus shares with us that we're the light of the world. It's our responsibility. And, uh, you know, uh, Jesus Christ lived a blameless life. Uh, you, can, you can study the life of Christ and you cannot find fault. There's no area of his life recorded that you can find fault. And I'm satisfied all the unrecorded events that he, that he uh, committed uh, were faultless also. Jesus Christ lived a sinless, faultless life. Now, you and I will never be called sinless and will never be called faultless. But what he's telling us to do is we need to live a life of self-control. You know, uh, they tell me that m many people are on medications because they refuse to, uh, to, to take uh, control of some area of their life. Uh, there's many people's finances are in a mess because they will not take control. Uh, there's many people uh, uh, that uh, their relationships are not strong because they will not take responsibility and self-control. So Jesus Christ was blameless. He tells us to live holy and blameless, but we know we're going to come up short, and that's not an excuse, but what we do need to, to have and produce is self-control. Well, another Wednesday night. Thank you. I, I hope, hope, uh, hope the study gave you a little benefit. 
I will share with you if you ever uh, if you're local and you'd like to ever visit us. Uh, Faith Baptist Church is located at 205 East Main Street in Lagodi. Uh, if you if you want to write us and talk to us, uh, we have a post office box, and the post office box is 374, and that's Lagodi, Indiana, and the zip 47553. Faith Baptist, and so. Uh, uh, once again, we love you. We care so much for you. We, we, uh, next week, we'll finish Philippians chapter 2. Thank you for your faithfulness and listen. Join me in prayer. Father, we, we ask that you would bless those that have listened tonight. Uh, Lord, grant them all a good night's sleep tonight. There may be some of them that aren't going to go to sleep, but maybe, maybe some of them are, are listening and they're getting ready to head to work. Uh, plant, uh, grant them safety at work. Father, be with that one person that may realize they're not honoring you as Lord. Uh, and they would right there at their chair just say, Father, be merciful to me, a sinner. Come to my heart and live. And Father, be with all of us in the Christian community to accept our responsibility to be the light to the world. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.